What's good? This is Trey and welcome to this presentation. The topic is how to become a sexy beast. All right, I'm going to break down what it means to be a sexy beast and how to become one. Okay, so a sexy beast. All right, what is, what is a sexy beast? A sexy beast is essentially a man who is grounded in his masculine energy a man who has des designed himself into a sexy archetype and a man that knows how to communicate in a way that is attractive and seductive. So to me, a sexy beast, you know, has those three, three things going for him, right? So let's talk about how, you know, what do I mean by these, these three things and how you can develop them into your character, into your beingness. So the first one is grounded masculinity. Grounded masculinity. So let's look at what I mean by grounded. When I say grounded, I mean your ability to stay cool, calm, composed um, in the face of adversity, in the face of challenge, when you're experiencing tension. You know, when you're going in the unknown, when you're taking risks, being able to stay grounded, being able to stay composed, being able to have a, a um, strong demeanor, a strong character that's not going to budge and shake and break and fold as soon as it's tested or challenged. You know, being grounded is being um, understanding what you stand for, you know, having values, having a code, having principles, having things that you believe in and that you stand for and not breaking, not changing character as soon as someone challenges you, as soon as someone tests you, as soon as life starts to get hard, you start, you know, breaking down and shifting and you know what I mean? It Being grounded is staying, is having a strong foundation as far as your character goes and not breaking, you know what I mean? Like you're, imagine yourself as like a brick, a brick house versus a straw house or a hay house, right? The, the th uh, three little pigs, <laughs> right? You wanna be strong, you wanna be firm. Imagine yourself as a stone, you know, like in the, in the, in the ocean or the river or whatever, the water's hitting the stone, but the stone stays firm. You know what I mean? So that's what I mean by grounded. It's like you're not like shifty. You're not all over the place. You're just calm. You're collected, and and you um your confidence. Uh, you're content. You know what I mean. You're powerful. You you, you know you 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 um embody strength. So that's what I mean by being grounded. Now masculinity, masculinity, you know, or, or masculine energy is is um. <clears throat> Assertive energy is action-oriented energy. It's forward-moving energy, right? So the combination of being grounded and masculine is powerful because that leads to growth. That leads to evolution. That leads to creation. That leads to progress. That leads to forward movement. And so in order to really be in your masculine energy, you have to have a purpose. You have to have a goal and you have to be moving toward this purpose and this goal, right? And the more, the more, um, <clears throat> the more you know what you're clear on your goal, you're clear on the purpose. The more masculine energy you can carry, right? And not only being clear and 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 um, focused on your purpose, but truly being committed to it. You know, truly going after it, not just okay, I know my goals, I know my purpose, and then just kind of just you know, moving in the wind, you know, being blown around by the wind. It's like you're a force of nature and you can't be, um, you, nobody can like get you to deviate. Nobody can get you to be swayed or pushed around or stepped on. You know what I mean? It's like a strong, powerful force of nature. Imagine yourself like that, but it's grounded, right? It's grounded. It's not all over the place. It's not cha chaotic. You know what I mean? It's there's order, there's order within your energy, within your beingness, right? There's a method behind the mat, the madness, right? 
So that's that idea of grounded masculinity. So that's the, that's the main thing. And what that leads to is that leads to confidence, right? Once you know exactly what you're doing, what your goal is, what your purpose is, what you're moving towards, you start moving towards it. And within that, you have this groundedness about you where you can handle tension. You can handle the challenges that come your way. You can handle adversity and you don't break, you don't budge, you don't fold. That's what develops confidence. You have to prove that to yourself by living, by living, by taking risks, by going towards the unknown, going out of your comfort zone and seeing that you can handle life. All right. <clears throat> so that's the one of the qualities of, of a sexy beast is being grounded in masculine energy. OK, the second one is creating a sexy archetype. So what do I mean by that? Essentially, you want to take these qualities of men that women find it sexy or attractive and put in these qualities into yourself. Now me, I, you know, there's different ways to play the game, but I want to play the game with the intelligently, right? With intelligence. And so I went and found somebody that really was able to break down attraction um, to a science, right? And I tested it for myself. So I'm not, I didn't just read the book and just say, okay, let me take his word for it. I went and tested it for myself and it worked. So if you want to do it the way I did it and, and am doing it, then I'm going to show you the qualities I look at, right? People say, oh, women want looks, money, and status. I'm aware of that. But we also need to look at um, what are some qualities that women look for that are not these, these, obvious qualities that we all know right like the qualities that are going on below the surface the ones that are speaking to her biology that are speaking to her dna that's the part she can't control that's the qualities i want to trigger not the ones that are, are obvious and you know what i mean no the ones that are below the surface so mystery gave us some good ones They're very powerful and the, and the best one he gave us was pre-selection pre-selection and pre-selection is basically you demonstrating to women that you get women, right? And it's basically, to me, the better way to put that is you have abundance with women, right? So instead of focusing on getting one woman, you focus on how you can be attractive to many women, right? And then there's some core qualities that you can develop to be attractive to many women. And so let's look at some of them. So any any chance you get to show pre-selection, show it, right? And and to make pre-selection even more powerful, you want it to be women are into you, but you want them to be into you sexually, right? So now let's look at some other qualities that can lead to you getting pre-selection, all right? Protector, so we said pre-selection, protector of loved ones, right? So you want to demonstrate in your beingness that you are a protector, Um. You are somebody who steps up to challenges, steps up to threats, defends your loved ones, defends the people around you. You hold, this, this is part of masculine energy. This is assertive energy. This is protective energy. This is action-oriented energy. This is not run away. This is not submit. This is not receive. This is um, exert, you know, um, being proactive, you know what I mean? Being assertive, um, being action oriented, right? And basically handling shit, stepping up and handling shit, right? So you're a protector of loved ones. You protect those you love, those around you, family and friends, your mate, whatever, right? The other one, <clears throat> leader of men. You want to demonstrate leadership qualities. You need to lead in life. That's why you need to know your purpose and your goals so you can know that and lead. Once you know what that is, you don't go and follow. You know, actually, let me let me say that properly. A good leader has to be a good follower, right? So in order to become a good leader, a smart thing to do is find a great leader. Find a really great good leader and follow him and learn how to lead. And then learn as you learn how to lead, by following him, you lead your, your tribe, you lead your squad, you lead your crew, whatever. You know, you start building your, your squad, start building your team, but you follow what you learn from that leader, right? So in order to become a great leader, you find, you find a great leader and you, you watch how he leads. And then you follow and then you take what he's doing, how he's leading, and you start leading in your life, right? So you follow him, right? Because he's, you know, essentially 
you want to find a leader that's that's leading people in the right direction so you can benefit from following him but also pay attention to how he leads so when it's your time to lead you can lead but also have this willingness and this being ready to lead when it's time to lead maybe at some point the leader may ask you to lead in certain areas um, of the objective or whatever's going on so becoming this leader right leading people leading men leading women you know, when you are relating to a woman, you want to lead in a relationship. If you want it to be a sexual relationship, romantic relationship, with a proper man-to-woman frame, you need to lead. End of story. You lead and you delegate, you know, that leadership role at different times during the, the, the relationship and interaction. But you hold that leadership role, right? <clears throat> so, leader of men. Um, the other one, healthy emotions. You need to demonstrate that you are healthy when it comes to emoting, when it comes to showing your emotions and communicating your emotions. You're not crazy, you're not insane, you're not all over the place, you're not out of control. You're controlled, um, you are in control of your emotions in the sense that when emotions come up, you observe them and you allow them to flow through your body and you express them in a healthy way, right? If you're angry, you express your anger in a way that is healthy, right? You may, um, you may just tell the person, look, you know, I'm, you know, you're, you're I'm not, a, I don't appreciate how you're talking to me or, you know what I mean? You just let them know, look, you're, you're bringing up this anger in me and you can do that in a healthy way, in a, in a uh, calibrated way. <clears throat> or, you know, if you're really a hothead or whatever, instead of taking out a person, you know, you go uh, take up a martial arts or something and, and put that anger into that, put that angry energy into Things that can lead to productivity, you know what I mean? Lead to success, lead to winning. But don't be, don't let your emotions like basically throw you into negative directions or create negative situations. It's like learning how to demonstrate power over your emotions, right? And to me, that's even that's actually taking a step further to healthy emotions. Because healthy emotions is just knowing when when to emote and, and how to express your emotions. But to me, you know, you take it to another level where you can demonstrate this sense of control over your emotions, right? Like your intelligence is actually, you know, uh, senior to your emotions, right? So uh, what we touch on? Pre-selection, leader of men, healthy emotions, successful risk taker. So essentially you want to demonstrate that you are the type of man that will step into the unknown, will get out of his comfort zone, will take risk calculated risk and you'll do it with intelligence you'll do it calculated you know to the best of your ability and when you do it you tend to win right or it tends to lead to a better condition or a better situation like you don't just take risk and then you fail or you take risk and then you take like stupid risk or risk that have no benefit it's like you take risk but you take intelligent risks that lead to success that lead to prosperity right so successful risk taker and then the other one is I think there's another one I might have missed hold on pre pre selection leader of men protector of loved ones healthy emotions successful okay so that's the five the five main ones that mystery has given us so those five qualities I have consciously ingrained into my character because those are qualities that speak to a woman's DNA those are qualities that trigger attraction in a woman because those are what we call survival values. A man who has those qualities will survive in nature, will survive in the world, okay? Now from there, creating this sexy archetype, you have these five survival values. Now you get more um, creative and more artistic with your archetype. So now that I've Im implemented those five qualities in my archetype, now I start looking at these other qualities that I think are cool that I have noticed that the women that I find attractive, they look for these qualities in a man, right? So what are some things that I've noticed, right? Um, social skills, you know, a lot, the, the women that I go for, tend to go for, they're looking for a man that has, um, that can um, handle himself or carry himself well in social situations. A man that can lead her in, in social situations, a man that is socially free, that can express himself, express himself with authenticity, express himself from a genuine place, right? That's another quality that's attractive, right? How you look, 
right? I don't necessarily think I'm a pretty boy or I'm very good looking or any of that, but I've created a look that looks cool, a look that looks sexy, right? I've created by my style, by the way I groom myself, by the way um, I take care of my body. I've created this archetype that is sexy to women. And I did this by looking at other archetypes, other, other men that are successful with women. I look at their archetypes and I say, oh, I like that. All right, I'll take that. Oh, I like that. I'll take that. Right? And I start putting it into my character. Right? It's like I'm making a um, cake. You know, I take these ingredients and, and make this recipe and create this cake. Right? And I want to, I want a, I create a look that is clearly communicates what I want to communicate. I want to communicate to the to the right the women that I want to attract right so for example if you want <clears throat> submissive women feminine women your archetype must demonstrate that you are a masculine man right your archetype must demonstrate that you are a dominant man and you said you want to create an archetype that communicates the right things to the women that you want so if you want like an artistic woman you need to uh, a woman that is into art and stuff like that, you need to create an archetype that's artistic so that woman will see that and you will catch her attention. You know, know the type of women you want, right? And, and create this archetype that not only you like, because you, first of all, you have to like the archetype. Actually, you have to love the archetype that you create. Like, I love the way I look. I love my design, right? I And like, I have fun. You, have, you, you can have fun with the process. It's not supposed to be boring, right? You find characters, people, superheroes, super villains, whatever, and take these characteristics that you like about them. You put it into your character, and you go and test it out in the world. You see how people respond to you. See how women respond. You know, are you getting the right type of responses, right? And and make sure you know you're really up, applying yourself properly. Like, don't just go up to one woman and one woman doesn't approve, and you say, "Oh, it's a bad archetype." Like, go up to multiple women, get different responses. See, okay, all right, all right, whatever. You know, and, and, and basically you, you keep testing out this character until you created a character that is on point, right? You got to you gotta try different things out. You got to take risks. You know what I mean? You got to, like, I tried out a lot of different shit. You know what I mean? Like, I used to wear suits at one point, you know, suit and tie. I used to dress, like, jerseys and um, big clothes or whatever. I used to, um, you know... You know, I tried, like, I tried uh, kind of like a, a gothic kind of look at one point. Like, not makeup and stuff, but like, all, just always all black, always all black, right? That was my vibe for a certain point. You create these different characters, right? <clears throat> so, you create a sexy archetype. You have the five survival values, and then you add on other qualities, right? Like I said, like social freedom, you know, creating an archetype that looks good visually. You know, you want to smell good, get some good cologne. You know, you want to communicate to the senses the right things, you know, to her senses, like her taste, touch, smell, um, sight, you know, hear, uh, hearing, like everything. You want to communicate as much uh, attractive qualities as possible. I even worked on my voice, right? Like I've calibrated my voice to to give off a certain vibe. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's, it's low, it's controlled, it... Um, you know what I mean? There's like certain pauses and different things. These are all created. Like this, this is all a design. This is not by chance. You know, I didn't just like randomly just end up the way I am. It's like I actually designed this and I went for sexy. It's like guys don't even really use that word too much. I, I don't really hear guys use that word, but like go for that. Like, yo, I'm going to create a sexy archetype. That's what I'm going for. You start looking at guys that women find think are sexy. And it's not just, it's not only about looks. Look at their body language. Look at their mannerisms. Look how the guys carry themselves. Look at their behavior. All those things are included, right? So you create this sexy archetype. You know, look at, like, think about these archetypes that women go for. The bad boy, the rocker, the um, the businessman, the ladies' man, the, you know, the, the, the suit and tie guy, the... Um, the, the carefree wild guy that you know there's these different archetypes that women you could take qualities from these archetypes and create a unique archetype like this beingness that i have is unique 
you know, I have taken different qualities from different archetypes, even, like I said, like superheroes, super villains, like I've taken this characteristic of the Joker. The Joker is like, <clears throat> he has like a humorous outlook on life, but at the same time, there's like a seriousness there too, because he, like he, he lives, you know what I mean? Like he does shit, he makes shit happen or whatever, but at the same time, it's like kind of like a joke to him at the same time. So it's like, that's like an interesting character character trait that I've taken from the Joker. You know what I mean? And certain character uh, character traits that the Joker has that I don't want. You know, I don't want to be evil. I don't want to be killing people, none of that, right? But there's certain things. So you look for these certain things that can help you, that can make you better, improve your character, right? So from there, then now we have to look at, okay, now that you've become grounded in your masculine energy, You've created this sexy archetype. Now, how are you going to get women? You have to go out and meet women, right? You have to have a system for meeting women, getting in front of women, showing them your value. You have to demonstrate your value. Women are seeking men of value, so you have to show up, right? Get in front of these women. I do it through cold approach pickup. I go out and I approach women. I go out and start a conversation with women and allow the conversation allow me me and the women to have a conversation and basically what's happening is we're both judging each other to see is this a potential mate is this someone that has the values that I'm seeking and that's what I do and I do that consistently and that's my system so I go out I approach women in my grounded masculine energy with my sexy archetype I talk to them right either indirect or direct you know, sometimes I go indirect depending on the vibe, how I feel. Sometimes I go direct depending on the vibe, how I feel. Right. And the whole point is really to demonstrate these values that I have. Um, <clears throat> Mystery talks about DHV. You DHV, you demonstrate your value. Whatever your values are, you communicate that through your language, through your body language, through your mannerisms, through your uh, decisions in the interaction and your leadership quality and how you respond to what she says like all of these things are showing your value right and so you have to know what your value is you have to know what are the attractive things about you and you need to amplify those things and communicate those things a lot of it for me is body language a lot of my how i communicate my value is through my body language i've developed the body language of someone who who uh is of value right like i've studied men of value and i've also discipline myself to take the actions within my day of someone of, of value so i naturally and start embodying <clears throat> the communication the body language the behaviors of an attractive male right because i actually live that way like if you actually had a camera and recorded my life you would see that i'm actually doing the things that a masculine grounded man who's on his purpose who has value who's benefiting others and benefiting himself as well loves himself and loves others and wants to make the world a better place if you look at my life you'll see that's what i'm actually doing so it comes out in my communication it comes out in my body language it comes through and it and it's clear and it's obvious right and that's what you want you don't want the woman to like not know i don't know about no you want her to clearly know okay this dude is hot and you and you do that <clears throat> By demonstrating your value right so you demonstrate like the leader of men you demonstrate leadership you demonstrate that you're a protector of love by telling stories or just having a protective energy um, that she can feel you know you demonstrate that you uh, that you're a successful risk taker by telling her yeah I'm doing this business or I'm doing this or whatever right you demonstrate even just the approach alone shows your successful risk taker like how you approach her right if it's bold and confident whatever that shows successful risk taker um, <clears throat> Healthy emotions, but throughout your communication, just showing, hey, I'm a healthy, uh, I'm a man who has healthy emotions, right? Um, and whatever, uh, you know, I might be missing one or whatever, but the point is you, you communicate these values. You communicate your social freedom. You communicate your intelligence. You communicate your artistry. You communicate how creative you are. You communicate your, um, you know, whatever uh, um, lifestyle you have. Maybe your lifestyle is... is uh, lifestyle of value you, de you demonstrate that you communicate your philosophy on life you communicate your future your goals your vision 
and and you also get to know her you find out like what are your values like you know you qualify her you're like you know why so i you know now you know what i'm about why should i get with you you know you see my value what's your value besides your looks you know that's the vibe you know if you carry that vibe you know women are uh, women are looking for the you know the, the the highest value man that they can get you know what i mean so if so see it that way it's like okay in this communication that I'm about to have with this woman, how can I demonstrate to her that I'm the highest value man that she can get with, right? And a lot of it happens before the interaction. It's like guys try to think, okay, what do I say to... No, how you live is your DHV, your demonstration of high value. What you did before you approach this girl is what's going to come, come across, right? Like your energy behind your communication, your emotion behind your communication, the intent behind your communication... It's going to be based on how you've been living. All right. So, <clears throat> so you communicate your value, whatever the vibe, you check the vibe, you check the energy that, that is being exchanged in the communication. If it feels good, if it feels right, then you know what you suggest. Okay. You, you know, we should meet, meet up. We should continue this. Like it's basically you're telling her, look, this was a good vibe. We, we had a good time just now in this short interaction. Why, w why would we not continue this? Right? And that's the vibe. And you're like, okay, yo, I, I'm actually having a party. You should come. Or, hey, you know, I think it would be great to grab coffee sometime. Or, you know, whatever, the, whatever you vibe you're feeling, communicate that. Don't worry about, oh, what do I say? What? No, it's how you feel in the moment. Speak from your heart. Speak from your soul. Right? What do you really want to say? Say it. If you're not saying what you really want to say, that means you have her on a pedestal or you care too much about her opinion. And, and that frame is off because you're supposed to see yourself as a masculine energy that she can be submissive and fem feminine to, right? So you're supposed to see yourself as the authority. You're supposed to see yourself as a dominant, as a leader, right? So a leader is not supposed to be wondering, oh, am I saying the wrong thing to to the follower like some because she's supposed to follow you right like in 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 the sense of okay that your your dominant masculine energy that's moving forward she's supposed to follow you and nurture your purpose nurture your goals nurture what you're doing right with her feminine energy so it's like you have to see it that way you don't see it as <laughs> guys are relating to women in the wrong way they're seeing her as the masculine energy like let me follow her let me do what i what no it's the other way around you're supposed to hold the value. You're supposed to hold the value to evolution, the value to prosperity, the value to success. You're supposed to look at you and be like, if I get with him, my life gets better. All I have to do is follow him and nurture what he's doing and be receptive and things will get better for me. And that's the vibe you want to create. So now you ask her for the number. It's like, of course, she's going to be like, of course. Yeah, let's go, whatever. And then you get her on a date. You continue the same vibe. You keep demonstrating the value that you already demonstrated, but you should have evolved and even have more value to show on the date. You show that value, you, you enjoy the moment, you express yourself, you stay grounded and present and communicate from your heart, from your soul and let, let what needs to happen, happen. Don't try to force any agenda. Don't try to force, oh, I gotta have sex with her tonight or any of that. It's just, let me enjoy this moment. Let me experience life moment by moment and see where it takes me. <clears throat> and then if the vibe is great, if the vibe feels good, then invite her over to your place. You know, you say, hey, you know, I'm actually going to go home. I'm not going to sleep right away. I'm going to watch a movie. You should come and uh, join me or you should come and keep me company. Or I'm going to go home and I'm going to probably do a little piano practice session. If you want to come and watch, you should come over. Like whatever you would normally do, you just tell her, look, I'm going to go and do that. You can come and join me. Like I'm going to go and create a vibe. Come and get, you know, join the vibes, you know, come and enjoy the vibes. Come and benefit from the vibes, not Hey, I'm going home and I, and I want to have sex with you. You know, you don't have to say that. You just let her know, look, we're going to continue the vibe. <clears throat> and if she's feeling the vibe, she probably maybe kind of in her head like, oh, maybe he wants to have sex or whatever. But if she's really feeling the vibe, she, she's going to want to have sex. Why not? It's a good feeling, right? As long as you're showing that you have the value that she seeks, why would she not want to have sex with you? That's what men and women are supposed to do. That's natural, actually. Right? So when the, if, let's say the girl comes over... <clears throat> My thing is, I just kind of, <clears throat> I see her as a cat, right? Um, like, I see her as, okay, you know, she, 
if she, when, you know how cats are like with, when a cat is in an environment or whatever it kind of just does its thing and when it's ready it will come and rub against you or come in your lap or whatever and that's kind of how you want to be with the woman when she comes over you don't want to be all over her like trying to force sex or whatever it's like instead just do what you said you're gonna do if you're gonna watch a movie turn on a movie and watch the movie move around go and get some snacks whatever drink some water whatever move around you know, go on your phone maybe a couple of times, whatever. Do what you would normally do and then just feel out the vibes. the vibes. The vibes will change. Like energy doesn't stay the same, it changes. So if if things are feeling good or whatever, you get a vibe that you want to like <clears throat> you sit a no, little closer to her, you sit a little closer, whatever. Or maybe she might just come to you. Like I said, like the cat, like when she's ready, she'll come closer to you or whatever. You read these signals and then you make the move when it's time to make the move. You know what I mean? Same, uh, you know, and if sometimes you don't get the vibe that sex is going to go down, you know, sometimes a girl may go over and the vibe is not sane to have sex in that, that moment. If you force it, you're going to fuck up. Don't force anything. You don't need to force shit. You know, you allow things to happen. <clears throat> you keep your, of course, you keep your masculine energy, keep your assertive energy, you make the move when you get the vibe to do it. And you don't get, you don't uh, break when she rejects your move. Like if you go for a kiss or you go to hold her hand or whatever, she says no, you don't break. You just say, okay, not right now, right? In your head, that's what you're thinking. Not right now. It doesn't mean no, it just means not right now. Give it some time. Be patient, right? So that's the vibe. That's how you become a sexy beast, man. You uh, make sure you have your grounded masculine energy on point, on check. Make sure you've designed yourself into a sexy archetype. And then you have a system or a way of being that attracts women Get some on dates and seduces them. And then you create the relationship you want to have. You want to have a girlfriend? You create that relationship. You want to have a rotation? You create that, that relationship. You want to polygamy or whatever you want to do. But it starts by designing yourself into the beingness that can get that result. Right? You don't just wish for it. You don't sit around hope it happens. You create it. You manifest it. You attract it by designing your character and your life to attract that result. All right. So if you're interested in becoming a sexy beast, you would like some help on how you can create this as your beingness and embody these qualities that I spoke about. Go ahead and private message me. I have a new program um, and I'm only going to be doing this for a short period of time. But it's a 21 day challenge. Right. It's normally four ninety seven, but I'm only going to be charging ninety seven dollars for a couple people. Right. I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to stop doing this. But once it gets to like too many people, I'm going to stop doing it and the price is going to go back up. So right now it's $97 for a 21-day challenge. I give you the exact steps you need to take to become a sexy beast, to become grounded in your masculine energy, to create this sexy archetype, to develop this, this uh, system that I have to attract, date, and seduce the exact kind of women that you want. Right? I hold you accountable on a weekly basis. It's three weeks, so 7, 14, 21 days. That's three weeks. I hold you accountable. Three calls. We'll jump on three calls at the end of each week to make sure that you've been taking action, you've been moving forward. Then at the end of the 21 days, we'll assess. Depending on the goal, you may you would have achieved the goal or you would be at a place where you're closer to the goal. But the, the point is, those 21 days, I would have gave you the exact action steps that you need to take to achieve your goal. So you might, depending on the goal, you might achieve it in 21 days. Some goals will take a little longer. But the point is, you will have exactly what you need to achieve your goal. Like, it will no longer be like, oh, how do I do this? How do I make this happen? How do I get a girlfriend? How do I? No. i show you how to do it. 21 days, I will hold you accountable. If you want to continue working together, we figure that out. Otherwise, you'll have the momentum for those 21 days. You can keep going. Okay? So if you're interested, go ahead and send me a private message. Thanks for watching this. Peace.